everybody, it's Mrs. Williams, and today we're going to learn about the three subsystems of a robot. Every robot can be divided into three subsystems. The chassis, which is the bottom, the lift or the intake, which is generally the main body of the robot, and then the object manipulator. The object manipulator is what actually manipulates the game field elements, or moves the objects on the field. All three of these subsystems need to work together to perform its task and they also need to stay within the criteria and constraints. So the size limits, the number of motors, you gotta keep all of that in mind as you build all three subsystems. You also need to think how these three subsystems are going to actually connect together. And it's probably one of the biggest mistakes people make is they decide on each subsystem separately and then they don't know how to integrate them. So as you're deciding on the subsystems that you're going to choose to build, you need to make sure that you have a pretty clear idea of how your lift is going to connect to your chassis and how your object manipulator is going to connect to your lift. The first thing we're going to talk about is the chassis. The chassis is the bottom of the robot. This is where all of your structure and support comes from. So you want to make sure it's very sturdy. You also want to make sure you pick the correct shape. There are three main shapes to chassis. You can have a square shape, a U shape, or an H shape. Now there's many modifications of these shapes and there are some more complicated ones as well, but we're just going to stick to these three most common shapes at the moment. Now let's take a look at this chassis right here. So here we have what we call an H-shaped chassis and you can see why it's called that. It has two sides and a center, which of course makes the shape of an H. Now with this chassis you will see that there are four wheels that are sandwiched between metal. And this is very important so that you have an axle that's connected between two pieces of metal. It has two connection points rather than just one. Most students want to put a wheel out here on this axle and then it wobbles. It's like a teeter-totter. We call that a cantilever. But if you have an axle going through two different metal points, it makes a real sturdy axle when it spins. You will see that this motor and this motor are direct drives, which means they're directly attached to the wheel. And the reason why this is important is because you are going to not need any gears either between the motor and the metal or the metal and the wheel. You can add additional gears, which means that you're trying to increase speed or increase torque. But especially with these V5 motors, we've really found that we don't need to do that as much anymore. These are very powerful motors. Maybe in VEX IQ you might increase speed, uh, but it might be worth figuring out how, how to play the game first. And if that speed is a variable you want to increase. So if you take a look at the direct drive, you will see that we have our motors on the inside of the chassis so that they are protected. We also have some spacers between the wheel and the metal so that wheel doesn't wobble, it doesn't move anywhere. Some people use shaft collars and that's okay, but if that shaft collar gets loose and then moves, then your wheel will begin to wobble and that can be a very big problem, especially when you're doing autonomous code. So we have spacers so these wheels aren't moving. We've got our axles between two connection points and on this chassis we have four motors, so four direct drives. Now if I tip this over you will see that on top of the chassis we have two sets of towers and this is getting ready to add our second subsystem on. We're going to put our gears and everything we need uh, to attach the second subsystem between these towers. Once again we're using two so that that axle can be held very sturdy between two points on the towers. All right, let's talk a little bit more about lifts. So before you decide on what chassis shape you're going to go with, you really need to figure out what lift you're going to use. So there's a lot of different lifts out there. The most common probably are the linkage lifts, which are the four bar, the six bar, the eight bar, or the double reverse four bar. Now I want to talk a little bit about the four bar. So the four bar looks like this, and you can see that it has four bars. One, two, three, four. And this gear right here is what drives this lift. So eventually a motor will be attached to this tower 
and it will go through, this axle will go into the motor and it will spin this gear. And when that motor spins in forward, this will go up to create a lift, and when it goes in reverse, it's going to go down. So your object manipulator would go on this beam or C-channel right here, and you can actually make this beam longer or add anything to it to attach that particular type of object manipulator. Maybe it's a claw, maybe it's an intake roller, whatever you use on this, obviously you're going to modify to attach that object manipulator to, which is your third subsystem of the robot. So if you take a look at this four bar, you can see that it has quite a bit of lift, but maybe not as much as you want. But this one's a very easy build. So I want to show you a couple details about building four bars. And you will see, first of all, that I have a gear attached to this C channel, or if it was VEX IQ, it would be connected to a beam. And notice that we've got two screws that connect this gear directly to this C channel, or to a beam in VEX IQ. Now these screws have the heads facing up on this side and inside, tucked away inside of this C, you will see that there are two screws with the cap nuts. And so those are tightened and, and locked down so this gear is secured to this beam. So when the motor then powers this gear with an axle, it's going to move the whole beam when the, when the gear moves. So one thing you need to know that when you connect this to your next bar, that you're only going to connect it with one point so that it actually pivots. I'm actually going to move this one up a little bit to about right here. And I'm going to um, use a screw to connect these two. But this is the trick. You need to include washers. So I'm going to go ahead and put my screw through this side. And then I'm going to add two of these nylon washers to reduce the friction so that the metal is not rubbing on metal or the beam is not rubbing on the plastic beam. And so now I'm going to go ahead and connect this one uh, to the top of this beam. I'm going to go all the way to the top. And I'm going to actually use a nylock. Now normally I don't suggest you use nylocks when you're building for the first time because if you have to rebuild, these are really hard to take off. But a nylock has nylon inside, so when it screws down, here's the screw side that I'm going to place down, the nylon should be facing up. And when you do that, I'm going to go ahead and use my fingers to kind of start getting it onto that screw into the threads it'll eventually hit that nylon, and the nylon is very hard to screw into, but that's why it locks onto the screw. Now in order to do this, I'm gonna need to hold this in place. I can either use um, a, a wrench like this, or I can use this other end. It just needs to stay in place. I'm gonna hold that as I flip it over, and go ahead and screw this screw into that nylon nice and tight, but not all the way down. It needs to have some give, get my tools out of here, it needs to have some give so this is nice and loose because remember, this is going to be a joint that is moving, okay? So the trick here is, number one, you're gonna attach a gear to your main beam that's driven by the motor, and number two, to use those washers in between your two beams or your two metal C-channels so that it reduces the friction and they're not rubbing one on top of the other. So one thing I wanna point out is this bearing flat. And a bearing flat is used to reduce friction. And it's important that any time you have a joint of any kind, that you use a bearing flat to reduce that friction so that the axle or the screw is not rubbing on the corner of this metal. It actually can wear it down, but it also makes it very sloppy and uh, moves around a lot. So bearing flat cures all of these problems. And so bearing flat, what you do is you take two screws and you put them from the opposite ends and you put them in. You can use pop rivets as well, they just aren't quite as sturdy. And then on the other end I have the kep nuts that are holding these screws in place. And you'll see that I left the center hole open because that's the one I'm going to use. You could put two screws on the middle and the end and then open this last one up for an axle or a screw. But this is the best if you have the room to build it this way. This is the best way to do it. Okay, so now I'm almost ready to put the rest of my four bar lift together. Now notice I have a bearing flat and I have an axle with a shaft collar behind. I can use a screw instead of this axle, but I don't have a long enough one because I used a couple spacers when I attached this top gear 
um, in between here. You can see I have about, uh, I have two spacers between the C channel and the other C channel. And so I need to also space this one out so that it sits the same. So here I have my axle with my shaft collar coming from behind. And now I'm going to place this beam or C channel on top of that axle. Now notice that the positioning, we're gonna make a perfect rectangle. And this is why we have a four bar. We have one, two, three, four. Now I need some spacers in there that I forgot to put in because I need it to be the same distance from this bearing flat to this bearing flat. So I put two spacers in through my bearing flat. I'm going to put a shaft collar on the top. Now axles are generally a little bit sloppier than if you used a screw and made a screw joint, um, but this is going to work perfectly fine. I needed to do it for the spacing. Now a six bar lift would look like this. So notice it's very similar to the four bar because if I took this section off, you would see I have a four bar right here. But I extended this beam and added another section that looks like another four bar there, but really this only has six bars. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six bars. Now the tower is being represented by this one that I'm grabbing on right here. The tower does not move. It's a vertical. It's all my chassis right here. So if this was my tower, the motor would be connected to this gear through the two towers right here. And it's going to power it up if it goes forward. And you can see this time the reach is a whole lot higher. And then it comes down in reverse. And so this has a much higher reach, but the problem is, is that it's pretty big. So you're definitely going to have to think about size constraints and you can modify the size of these rectangles and make them smaller um, because obviously you're going to need to fit it in with your size constraints. One thing that's very important is that you lay out your lift before you begin to build because very likely you're going to have to cut some metal. Now if you're in VEX IQ, you are not allowed to modify any parts. You just have to find the size beam that fits uh, for you. You have a lot of options. So you can see here, I'm using this as the end of my six bar lift and I'm using this because I've already cut it and I don't want to waste the metal. So it's going to, going to be the size that kind of um, dictates how I'm going to make this six bar lift. And I notice when I place it on, my two screw joints are gonna go here and here. And I'm gonna count between there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine holes between. I come over here, I wanna make sure this also has nine holes between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, perfect. Okay, so I line those up and it looks like I have some extra metal right here. So I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm gonna make a mark where I can make some cuts to cut off that metal. And then um, I'm also going to count between these two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you will see that um, I've got two even sections um, and it's all ready to go and I've laid it out and notice that my tower will attach right here and if nothing is screwed together yet, I do have a little bit holding this, but it's laid out ready to go and I'm going to go make some cuts. Well, that's it for this video, and there's plenty more to learn about lifts, chassis, and object manipulators, but this is enough to get you started and to talk a little bit about the difference between a screw joint and an axle joint, and definitely you need to be using your bearing flats and washers and anything to reduce the friction. Know that you're going to make a ton of mistakes and rebuild all the time. That's just a part of robotics, so don't get frustrated. Just keep at it, and good luck with your building.